What is going on guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your fourth iPhone development tutorial. Super excited about this tutorial because we are finally going to be going over some user interaction. A way to interact with the user, not just uh, you know showing them some text on the screen because you know that's cool, but it ain't that cool. So here is the app we're going to be building. Um, two buttons and a label at the top of the screen that you can't see. Whenever you click a button, the label pops up with a button's name in it. So you click red, red pops up. Blue, blue pops up. Red, red, blue, red, blue, blue, red, blue. You know, pretty easy, pretty awesome program we're going to be creating. So again, we have a label on the top and two buttons on the bottom. You can actually put the buttons anywhere you want, but anyways, that's where mine are. So, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. So go ahead and uh, open Xcode, and let's go ahead and get started with this. What we're going to be doing is creating a new Xcode project and uh, just go ahead and make it a view based as last time choose and name it anything you want I'm gonna name mine Bucky's buttons I think that's kind of a catchy name maybe we can market that so go ahead and uh, before we jump right into building all the buttons and labels on the interface what we're gonna be do first what we're gonna be do first what what we're gonna be doing first is taking a look at these classes now these classes you see a couple things first of all these delegate classes these are pretty much the built-in methods pretty much the background housekeeping stuff we usually don't want to mess with these what we are going to be messing with is these view controller this view controller class now this view controller class is the class that controls all the stuff on your screen from this class you can control the buttons the labels the colors anything on your iPhone screen or iPod screen you can control using this class pretty cool huh hence the name view controller so let's go ahead first and jump into your view controller header and go ahead and delete these comments do we really need those I didn't think so so before we start typing code I want to give you guys a little background of how code and objects on your screen interact with each other so we're gonna have this code that we type in this class alright that's cool and then we're gonna have a bunch of buttons and labels on our iPod or iPhone alright that's cool I see this but how does the code actually connect with those buttons well whenever you type code in your class you're gonna be making these things called outlets and an outlet is pretty much your code representation of that object so say you made an object and by the way all an outlet is going to be is pretty much a variable so say you made a button on your screen you can make an outlet variable in your code so whenever you change that variable say a property of that variable it will actually change that button on your screen so you know they're pretty much one and the same again these are called outlets outlets are pretty much variables that are connected to objects on the screen so whenever you change the outlet you change the object on the screen alright so we know the basics of how to change an object on the screen but there's also these things that you can connect to the objects on your screen that are called actions and this is how you call code from objects so outlets go from the code to the objects but you can also do actions that go from the object to the code let me give you guys a quick example. Whenever you click a button on your screen, it's going to call an action, and this action might be something like run a method, maybe calculate, you know, how much gas mileage I'm getting in my car. When I click a button, call an action to calculate, you know, uh, how much a donkey weighs, you know. So whenever you create an action, pretty much you can set up an object on your screen like a button to trigger a special method called an action so that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial we're going to be using an outlet to change the label on the screen and whenever we click those buttons they're going to call actions to call methods in our program so you know I think it's about enough time of me talking let's go ahead and get coding the first thing we're going to be doing is creating an object to represent that label on the screen now the built-in UI label is the class to represent any label and I'm gonna go ahead and just name mine labels text so whenever 
we you know work with this object the labels text we're going to be working with that label you know that text that appeared on screen that either said red or blue so what we want to do now is since we need to actually use this outlet to change the object on the screen that label we actually need to build this outlet so how do we actually build outlets well the first step to do this is to use that property and if you don't know what property is I taught you guys this in Objective-C tutorials so that is why I wanted you guys to go over learning the Objective-C tutorials first what property does it actually just builds the setter and getters or mutators and accessor methods for you but we don't just build this property like any other normal property we're going to want to include two keywords non-atomic and retain now let's go ahead and finish building this in order to build an outlet go ahead and type in the keyword IB outlet and then go ahead and type in UI label and of course your property's name which is labels text now we're saying alright I mean you really don't need to know what these two mean right now but I know a bunch of people are gonna ask me so for you people and you people only and for you guys who really don't care don't pay attention don't pay attention to this non-atomic pretty much means that in Mac OS 10 the default is to create extra code for multi-threaded programs we don't need that in iPhone programs so just set it to non-atomic it means get rid of the extra code retain pretty much means keep your variable in memory so you know it doesn't get lost usually what you want to do is anytime you're creating a property that isn't just a basic raw data type like int char float you wanna retain it if you're creating just a basic property like um, you know int x then you don't need this at all but usually retain any property that isn't raw like this one simple enough so this is how you create an outlet and again this outlet whenever we change this object is going to change that object on the screen that we link it to so the only other thing that we need to include is the interface is that action now whenever we create an action we're gonna link it to the buttons so here's how you do this every time you create an action you need to pass an IB action this is what it returns I'm gonna name my action clicked because it's gonna happen when the buttons clicked and you wanna pass it ID sender and what the sender is is pretty much gonna be that button that's gonna be passed in so this is the method that's gonna be called whenever you click a button and I know all of this isn't gonna make a lot of sense in this tutorial but in the next tutorial I'm gonna clear things up and we're actually gonna be building the code to uh, explain everything so I mean we pretty much just built the titles of everything now in the next tutorial I'm gonna be showing you the code how to make everything interact and work so uh, thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and definitely check out the next tutorial it's gonna be a good one so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later